Hey guys and girls, how we doing today? I am going to do a video on how to become an owner operator. These videos tend to get thousands and thousands of more views than my normal weekly money and news and some of my securement videos. So if this, if you just found this and you just clicked on it, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Matt Sturgill. I am an owner operator. I've been in the business a little over 35 years. So if you, I do videos on all things trucking, uh, especially for flatbed. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button or whatever. And, um, so you can get the, and hit the notification bell. So you get uh, notified when I put out these silly videos. Um, so what we're going to do is start with how to, the steps to become an owner operator. However, I just did a video a few weeks ago called three things not to do when you become an owner operator. Um, I would really suggest you pause this right now, go find that video. In fact, I'll put it down in the description and I'll put it as the first comment in this video. So you can go down to the description or to the comments and click on it and watch it. It is really a good um, thing, a, a prelude to what we're gonna start now. So there's some things you need to do and know before you even get to this step. Um, I'm not going to recap it all, but you need to make sure you're ready for the business. Um, you've studied the business. You've been in trucking long enough. You know lanes. You know um, what you're getting into, which if you watch any of my videos for any period of time, do not get into trucking for money. Let me say that again. Do not get into trucking for money. There's far better ways to make a living. In fact, I just spent about an hour on the phone last week with a guy who went into home inspection. And though it's not for me, he's got a pretty gig, good gig going, you know, and um, he, he makes more than I do. And hour for hour, any skilled trade is probably better than truck driving. So um, uh, can you make money in trucking? Yeah, but I guarantee you're going to work more than the average guy. If you if you make a hundred grand and a plumber makes a hundred grand, I guarantee you the plumber worked less hours to get that hundred grand. So if this isn't in your blood, uh, if trucks, if there just isn't something about trucks you got to do, or you you like them, or this is, you like being out on the road, do not get in trucking. Okay. Uh, trucking is a tough, tough business. Um, I'm from the old school. A lot of the things I loved about it are gone now, but I'm not going to go down that road. Just trucking for money. Don't go in the same sentence. If there's an old saying, uh, you want to know how to have a million dollars in the bank after a couple of years of trucking? Start with two million. So um, <laughs> in a lot of ways, it's true, guys. Um, make sure this is something you want to do. Um, if it's just to make money, find another skilled trade. Plumber, electrician, contractor, lineman. The list goes on and on and on. I promise you'll be better off. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and then I'll be back. Uh, well, I got like five things here. We're going to go through them one by one. But like I said, if you haven't watched that video, I would highly suggest you, if you haven't stopped it already, stop the video now, go watch that and then come back. Cause it, it really talks about a lot of things you need to do before you get to what we're going to talk about now. And I don't have time to recap it all. Um, this video is probably going to end up being long enough. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, we're back. Well, Actually, it just went poop after I edited this, so it wasn't really gone. But I hope you went and watched those things because, um, like I said, I, I can't redo that whole 20-minute video in this video. It'll get way too long. Um, but there's some good things in there that you really have to have squared away before we start where we're going to start right now. So let's get going. The first thing you need to do when starting your trucking business, number one, in my opinion... And it's just one man's opinion, but this is the biggest thing to me personally, is you need to make Jesus Christ the CEO of your company. Matt Sturgill is not the CEO of Sturgill Trucking. I am in the business paperwork, but in real life, it's not me. It's not my wife. Without the almighty guiding me every step of the way, I would have failed. I could be here for hours telling you the doors he's opened and things he's done for me personally. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that someday, but number one to me is put him first in your business. Okay. Um, this is a tough gig. Uh, eight out of 10 owner operators are out of business when the first, in the first two years. So you got odds against you right out of the gate. So 
you're going to need his help in my opinion. All right, number two, truck. Okay, this is not getting the heart or the cart before the horse, but I'm not saying you have to buy a truck, but you got to figure out what you're going to do for a truck, right? You want to be an owner operator, you need a truck, you got to go buy a truck. So, so you need to go do your research and figure out how you're going to get a truck. You got enough money to pay cash or what are you going to do? I'm going to tell you this. You go down to a truck dealership, you're going to find out real quick that your credit score is not the be all end all. Okay. Companies that finance trucks, your credit score is part of it, but you can have a 750, 800 credit score. And if you have never been in business, um, you've never been an owner operator and you're a first time buyer you're going to walk out of that dealership at probably 16 to 18% interest. It used to be about 10, but right now, January, 2024, um, we're at the bottom of the barrel here. We had a big peak after COVID with the supply chain. Everybody thought they'd be an owner operator all overnight. There was a ton of money. Everybody made stupid money and they spent it stupidly and they bought trucks that were overpriced. Everybody jacked their prices up and trucks were $250,000 and guys were buying them and the market dropped back uh, down. It's not, it's still, uh, these YouTube videos crack me up. The, it, the market is still above what it was before all this, but we're down in the flatbed world and dry van is, dry van's the worst, but um, flatbed, we're holding 260, 270 a mile. Um, if you're leased on somewhere, we're still in the $3, 325 a mile. Uh, freight before the deductions, depending on how much you give up where you're leased. A flatbed, uh, the dry van, it's terrible. Buck fifty, two bucks a mile on a good day. It's oversaturated with flip flops that I call them. Um, they need to go. Some of them are going, but where I'm going with that is there's so many repos out there, so many people walking away from trucks, and banks are getting burned. They deserved it. They should have known better. Um, but, you know, they're federally protected, so they get their money back anyways. They win, and they get a truck back that they get to sell again. But that's another video for another time. But you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get a truck, and you're going to be in for a big shock when you go to truck dealership lots, okay? Um, unless they have some in-house financing, which I'm going to tell you about a place that I would recommend you go starting out. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but as far as, you know, Peterbilt dealerships, the big places, or even, you know, smaller truck lots or whatever, they still got to finance through banks. And right now it's tough, man. You're, you're going to be in for a shock. They're going to, they're going to want 20% down. So if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar truck, you need 20 grand cash down. Okay. Uh, 80,000, you could do the math, but you're going to need 20% down and you're going to come up, um, with pretty high interest. Now I know I'm going to get comments that, I bought here and they did it. Okay, I'm sure there's exceptions, but overall, um, I just went through this, uh, calling around, looking at buying a new truck or whatever, a different truck or rebuilding mine, and I talked to dealerships, and that's the going gig, man. Uh, first time buyer, which is you getting into trucking, you got a big wall to get over. Um, so what I would suggest to you, starting out, if you can't buy a truck cash, I would call and look at Loan Mountain. They do a truck leasing thing. Their rate's pretty good. Their down payments are lower. It's not your typical buying it because you're going to lease it through them. There's really no hidden fees. And I've known some guys that have gone through it. And it's a pretty square deal. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description and comments. But Loan Mountain, just look them up. Um, they have pretty fair deals, especially considering if you're a first time uh, going at it guy. So also, um, when it comes to the truck and you don't have to buy it, you're, you're really not ready to buy it, but you got to start thinking about how am I going to get a truck? And, um, of course it's number five. Um, but to help you get a truck, you're going to need to figure out where you're going to put that truck on at. Uh, if you're going to go under your own authority, which I highly recommend you do not, um, it's a bad deal. I've done that. Um, you're way better off to lease to a big carrier because there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, running on your, your own numbers, uh, everything is harder. You're going to be on the spot market and that's just the scraps of the freight world. And it's just a the guys on the spot market are starving to death now. Unless you have some customer direct freight or something, or you plan to have many, many trucks, uh, 
running under your own authority is not where you want to go. So what you're going to need is wherever you're going to lease, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, get a letter of intent. Lone Mountain will want to see it. Any finance company is going to want to see it. Um, your credit score is not going to get you out the door, okay? They want to know what you're going to do with that truck, how you're going to make money with it, and how you're going to pay for it. So they want to know where you're going to go to work. They want to see that you have a carrier that's ready to take you on, which they'll give you a letter of intent that basically says, yeah, we've checked this guy out. He meets our criteria. And uh, as soon as you get him a truck, we're going to put him to work. That's what they're going to want to see. So your truck and how you're going to get it is number two on the list. Uh, I'm going to go get something to drink, and then we'll go to number three. See you in a minute. <sighs> My wife just brought me some cold coffee or iced coffee or iced mocha, however you say it, wherever you're at. Okay, number three. This is huge. Here is where the 8 out of 10 failing comes into play and why 99% of owner-operators fail because of this reason. It is huge, so I can't overemphasize it enough. When you buy a truck, I don't care what they promise you. The warranty is not going to cover anything uh, unless you bought a brand new one. But even then, being in the shop, waiting to get repairs, um, downtime, missed loads are going to kill you. So... Uh, most guys aren't going to buy a new truck. Even the used trucks, their warranties, I did, I've done videos on this. Their warranties are not, they're junk. They don't cover hardly nothing. It's, it's all smoke and mirrors and promises that just are not going to pan out. So in reality, you're going to be paying the repairs on your truck. Even if you have some warranty, there's going to be times you are going to pay because if you can't get your truck in for two weeks over a $1,000 repair, you're all going to pay it out of your pocket unless you're just not real bright because you'll lose $10,000 or more sitting at home for two weeks over $1,000. Mathematically, somebody uh, commented on the YouTube video. Oh, looks like they want me to look up South Carolina on the load board. That's in the weekly money and news. If you subscribe, you'll see that. Um, you're going to pay that because, uh, from a business standpoint, it's better to take the thousand dollar hit than the $10,000 hit. Right. Okay. So you have to have, in my opinion, a minimum of $20,000 in reserves in the bank, preferably all in cash. Uh, when you become an owner operator, after you get the truck, after you paid the truck, after the down payment, everything, when it's all said and done, you've paid the truck, you've bought the Qualcomm or uh, Maven, whatever you got to buy to get going. Um, after it's all said and done and you hook to your first load, you need $20,000 in the bank. More if possible. I just wrote a check for $20,000 for an engine rebuild kit and I'm not done. Um, next month when it gets in, I got about $6,500 in labor. And there'll be another uh, miscellaneous uh, things that probably come up. Who knows, I might need a cam, another twelve, fifteen hundred bucks when they tear it apart. You know, things are going to come up, I promise you. They always do. So in reality, I'm probably seven or eight thousand dollars. Another check I got to write uh, to get this all said and done. I would suggest you have that available to you in cash money. Can you do it with credit? Yes, but the credit is just a very slippery slope. Um, once you get stuff stacked up on a credit cards, it's hard to pay for it. It's hard to get those balances paid down. You're paying huge interest. So if nothing else, at least have $10,000 in cash that you can do your normal type repairs. If you watch my videos, I don't have a truck payment, but I'm, I'm usually throwing a thousand bucks on average a month at my truck, um, to fix little things here and there. A credit card is not the way to pay for those. So you want to pay the thousand, put it back, pay 2000, put it back and have the other 10,000 available in some line of credit. That is bare minimum. I would suggest $20,000 cash and um, some credit available to you after that if you don't have more than 20,000 cash. Like I said, I'm going to be in this engine pushing the $30,000 mark and that's a bargain. You go to a dealership, you're going to be 40,000. They robbed you so bad. I have a good local mechanic that's going to do all this for me at considerably less and he don't, he don't rob me on the parts and things like that. So, you know, some guys are new motor, um, 40, 45,000. Emissions equipment's going to kill you guys. Um, 
when you buy a freight liner or something like that uh, and you need a one box 15 grand where are you going to get it um you've got to have some money in reserves that is huge and that is where most owner operators are done in two years or less so um have as much as you can and keep adding to it um a good number in my opinion is to have forty thousand dollars in the bank it's hard to do i know it's not going to happen overnight start with 20 and hope the lord blesses you and you can roll and build that up to 40 as soon as you can don't don't get that owner operator money and think you're a rich man all of a sudden and go out and buy you a hellcat and all these other harley davidsons and all these things you dream of that stuff will come over time you get your business rolling for two years first and make sure it's working for you build you up a good reserve of forty thousand dollars or so if possible then you go buy your harley and hellcat okay once your business is squared away so number three money and reserves after you get the truck and you're ready to go trucking all right number four we'll just go right into this i don't need to pause it we'll probably pause it after this number four and you know this video is geared towards not to offend anybody, real owner operators, lease purchase guys, that's not really an owner operator because um, it's not your truck. You can't take it anywhere you want to go. Um, you get a truck with like Lone Mountain or something, you can take it anywhere you want. If you start with Landstar or, and you want to move somewhere, they don't care as long as you're working. Well, lease purchase guy, you can't, you know, being a lease purchase, go, I don't like it here. I'm going to go over to Landstar. I don't work that way. Not until you get that truck paid for, which is usually a three or four year lease. Not a lease purchase guy. I don't like them. Uh, the only one exception is a carrier I'm leased to in the flatbed division. I don't know anything about their van lease, but in the flatbed division, uh, CRST has a great lease purchase program. It's the only one I endorse and somewhat sponsor. But this next one is for not just owner operators, but it's also for you lease guys. I see so many lease guys not do this, and you are throwing thousands and thousands of dollars away a year, okay, uh, in tax write-offs. You're shielded by the company you're leased to, so they're not, not going to come after you personally. But when you become an owner-operator, you have to do this, not just for tax reasons, for liability reasons. You have to set up a business, either an LLC or an S-Corp. I am not a CPA. Go talk to your CPA. He will tell you the differences. For most guys, LLC is all you're going to need. That's a limited liability corporation. S Corp really comes into play when you get up, you know, above three, four hundred thousand dollars, and you have employees because you get some other tax write-offs and payroll tax write-offs and things like that. But for a one-man band, LLC is going to be what most guys do. So you need to set an up a business license, an LLC or S Corp. Talk to your tax man in the state you live in and get that done and be paid to your business, not you personally, okay? Uh, limited liability corporation shields you. If you get in a wreck and kill somebody, there's limits to what they can sue you for. Another reason to be good to be leased to a big carrier, because I can tell you, God forbid that ever happened. Um, but if it did happen, they ain't coming after Sturgill Trucking. They're going to go after the big checkbook, and that's the company I'm leased to. So set up a business license. It gives you many, many more tax write-offs. It shields you from liabilities. And you lease purchase guys, you need to go do it right now. Number five is like number four is part of it. You need to have an EIN federal tax number. So get your EIN federal tax number. All These two are very easily done within an hour or two at home on a computer. Everything's online. It's super simple. You don't have to fill things out. You know, most, I should say most. I don't know. I mean, there could be some state out there that you actually got to go in and talk to them. But mostly it's all online. It's usually only a couple hundred bucks uh, to get it going. And uh, you need to do an EIN federal tax number. Um, that also is for tax write-offs and things like that. And a uh, business license requires that as well. So you're going to need to get your LLC and EIN number. All right. So I'm going to pause this and then we'll finish up with the last the last one here and I'll give you my thoughts on where to maybe start out. All right, see you in a minute. All right, y'all. After you've done those five things, the last thing you need to do is put your truck to work. I stated earlier in this video, I could not recommend more against getting your own authority. If you're going to get your own authority, I'm not going to do a video on how to do that. Um, 
just because I don't think guys should do that. I've done that. I could tell you how to do it, but there's plenty of video and information out there. Um, just know you got about a hundred more things to do. Uh, it's a lot of work to file all that paperwork and uh, compliance stuff, get insurance. You, you got a lot of work ahead of you. Um, but for this video, I'd say after you've done all those things, you've got your truck, you're ready to go Billy Big Rigging. You're going to go lease on to a good carrier. Now, I'm just going to throw a few names out there. They're big names. Um, good places to start, in my opinion. Uh, but there are others. You know, I can't see. I don't know every company. Maybe you have a place that uh, you've talked to that you think is better than this. And great. Put it down in the comments. If you guys have leased on to carriers and it's gone well for you, throw it out there. Um, guys will read it and maybe they'll check it out. Uh, I certainly don't know them all. But... Um, first up, I'm leased onto CRST in the flatbed. I think it's the greatest place I've ever worked in 35 years. That's just my opinion. Okay. I don't know about their, um, van division. I've heard good things. I've heard bad things. I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't swing doors guys. It's not my thing. Um, so here I would say if you want to, if you're a flatbedder, come on over, man. It's a good place and, and put my name down, would you? <laughs> Anyways, um, if you're not a flatbedder and you're a van guy, Landstar, guys. Um, Landstar is uh, the biggest owner-operators out there. They got like ten or 12,000 owner-operators. That's all they have. They don't have company drivers. Uh, they have great fuel discounts, tire discounts. It's a good place. They help take care of you. It's a bit of a hassle right here, about a 30-day process to get on over there. It's somewhat disorganized for whatever reason. Has been for years and years. I don't know why. I've never worked there. I have a whole Landstar story. Um, they're not going to go into that now, but they also have a flatbed division. And I think you could do okay in that flatbed division. I know they have an elite group of guys that make really big money hauling that Boeing stuff and NASA stuff. I hear that's a little hard to get your foot in the door of that part of it. But overall, um, you, if you're a flatbedder and you, you're like, I ain't going to CRST, you go to Landstar, man. They're all right. Same with Mercer. Um, although I got... I got quite a few guys uh, coming over here to CRST from Mercer here in the last month or so. So I don't know what's going on with Mercer. I hear uh, they're just down on freight. I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, we're we're stinking busy over here. We're doing fine, but I heard Mercer is not doing so good. Um, that's just what I heard. I don't know. It, it could be totally off, but I do know this. I got three or four referrals. Um, here in the last week of guys with intent to come over here because they've been watching my money and news video and um, we're blowing them out of the water. So I, I don't know what's going on there, but Mercer has always been pretty good for flatbed and they have a van division. Um, uh, other than that, I mean, I, I don't know, guys. I mean, the, Snyder has some stuff, you know, some tankers and this and that. Um, I'm sure all the mega carriers got s some stuff, but I mean, you're going to have to start somewhere and a big carrier is going to help you and shield you from a lot of things and help you with discounts and things like that to get you for through your first year or two. And then you can, you can move from there or if you find a better deal or whatever, maybe you know a better deal now, but basically go put your truck to work. And I think I covered it. If, if you're if you're looking to get a truck, figure out where you're going to lease and get a letter of intent to buy that truck. Uh, Lone Mountain is going to want to see it. Most any finance thing is going to want to see it unless you're just putting a huge amount of money down. But even then, I think, but the way things are now, they're going to want to see what's this guy going to do with this truck. It don't matter if you got a 750 credit score. You're not buying a car. You're not buying a boat. Okay. And even when you buy those things, they want to see where you're working. Same thing here. They say, well, this guy, he ain't buying this, this uh, semi to drive back and forth to his, his job down at McDonald's. They want to see, what are you going to do with this semi? How are you going to make money with it? So getting a letter from a big carrier takes care of that. They see, okay, this guy um, has already been out there talking to uh, someone. He has a place to take this truck and put it to work and make money. All right, guys, that's really all I got. I hope this helps somebody. I'm just a poor old boy from Southeast Missouri that needs a haircut. I'm not the be all end all. I don't know everything about trucking, but I have survived 35 plus years and just a grueling business that it, it, it could knock a guy down and keep a guy down and it's really tough. And I'm still here. So I just try to pass on what little bit of information I have in this 
peanut sized brain of mine that is slowly deteriorating into Halfheimer's. I can't remember what I went in the kitchen for most of the time, but this stuff I do know pretty well. All right, y'all. God bless you. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you like this stuff, subscribe. If you don't, hey, that's cool too. Best of luck to you. Um, and we'll see you on the next video. I'm going to do the money and news video here in a minute. I'll probably load that up Sunday night. I'm going to try to load this one up tonight. See you. Bye.